Okay, it doesn't look like anyone's coming out. We're recording. Okay, thank you. Seeing the presence of a quorum, I'm going to call the August 30th meeting of the Governance Organization and Legislation Committee to order uh, at 9.32 a.m. And Athena, if you could throw that thing up that I need to read. Pursuant to that one. I usually have a hard copy of it near me, but I didn't find it this morning. Okay, thank you very much. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, extended by Chapter 22 and 107 of the Acts of 2022, and extended by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Okay. Um, so there are several things on the agenda, but they're gonna be where we have several proclamations, resolutions to look at. Uh, Michelle, I'm not sure if, I'm gonna put suicide prevention down at the bottom because we just got it. Um, and if we have time, we'll get to it today. Otherwise, we'll postpone it to the uh, meeting on the 13th. Yes, my apologies. Um, oh, okay. And just so you know, the only change on that one is just the date from 2022 oh, to great. 2023. Okay. So. Okay. And Lynn, um, I sent you an email asking if you could please forward that as a referral to GOL so everyone has it. Yeah, I did put it in the packet when I got it. Uh, just a little bit ago. I'm right, doing that right we, now. I, I did yeah. too, but counselors haven't seen it. I, yeah. I'm doing it right now. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, I'm removing the Pakistan India. It was a special for the 75th anniversary. And if the uh, if anything changes about that, we'll get information from Councillor Balmilne, who will get things to us. Um, the Puerto Rican Heritage Day, I do not have an updated version with the events or anything, so we're removing that from the agenda. Um, the, the other thing is I wanted to check, I want us to vote on minutes and get that out of the way, but I, I still seem to be missing the minutes for July, uh, August, sorry, uh, August 19th and August, July 19th and August 2nd. Uh, I went back to see in other uh, meetings whether we had them. So what is in the packet today are 621 and 712, which I'd like, can someone make a recommendation that we accept those minutes? Um, I move that we uh, accept the minutes of uh, which dates were those again set? Uh, June 21st and yeah. July 12th. Of yeah. June 21st and July 12th. Is there a second? Second, Miller. Thank you, Michelle. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm going to call the a roll call for the vote, and it's uh, Lynn Griesmer. Yes. Mandy. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Jennifer. Yes. And I'm an I, so we have that out of the way. Uh, I'm going to call public comment since we have nobody here. <laughs> I guess that's not fair. If somebody shows up, I'll have to do it again. But um, all right, I'm trying to look at what else. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I want to get to the bylaws that re were referred to us. Uh, I've gotten nothing back from the town manager in quite a while, so there's nothing to do with those right now. But um, there are several uh, rule uh, bylaws that don't need any action. It was either taken previously by the council um, or no action is necessary because after a legal review, they were found to be fine. And one of those is 3.7 about licenses and permits. Um, uh, let me see. 
the special board of appeals was established. So there's no action. Um, 3.36 soliciting. Uh, again, that was reviewed in 2022 by KP Law. And the 3.51, the zero energy, we co I contacted the relevant people and there was no action required on those. Um, so I would, I don't know exactly whether we have to have a formal removal from that list or we just stop looking at them. Um, so um, if somebody can fill me in on that in just a second. Nuisance House has been sent to CRC and we're working on it. Um, we're going to, okay. And then there's the historic districts with Nate Malloy uh, and aligning that with the ZBA. It's interesting to me because that feels like so minor and part of me just wants to say is it important for us to deal with or can we remove it but um so i'd like to get the list at least on our end as cleaned up as possible uh the animal uh, regulations relating to animal that could be until we hear from carol uh, i'd like to keep that in play um how how are people doing with that, with those with that suggestion those suggestions? Do we need to Lynn or Mandy Joe need to or Athena need to bring back to council uh, bylaws that we're taking no action on, like the net zero energy, et cetera, or we just stop looking at them? I'm not sure what the procedure is. Mandy and then Jennifer. So in the past, GOL has just voted a recommendation that the council take no action, and then it gets reported, and the council doesn't have to do anything with that. If someone disagrees, they could ask the president to put it on the agenda, but it at least documents okay. GOL's okay. opinion. Okay. Uh, Jennifer, did you want to... I can't hear you. You're muted. That's I, I was going to say what Mandy said. Okay. Basically. So Mandy, um, you gonna make a motion? Pat, I'm looking for the solar. It, did you put that on the agenda? Net zero. Net zero. The solar bylaw. What, no, I'm net, not sure. net zero. Three point five one zero energy. And net zero. Oh, that's not on the agenda. It's in that group. Maybe I'm calling it the wrong thing. It's in the group that. Uh, hold on. Do 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 do. But um, it, I, I think on. what Athena is saying is you listed specific ones in the on the agenda, and that's not listed. Oh, poop. Um, <laughs> it is in the packet, is it? And it, it is part of this bylaw review. Is there? We can't deal with it at all, really. I, I, I will trust your judgment, Athena. It's just annoying. Not annoying to me that I forgot to put it in there. Um, and I, that might, you know, I'm trying to see if I skipped anything else where there was no action. Um, I don't think so. Yeah. So what should I be doing with that? Um, I would not get into a discussion about that one specifically since it's not on the agenda. Okay. Now, here's the thing. I don't think we need to ha have a discussion about it, but can we vote to recommend that the council take no action? I don't think you should take action on it since okay. it wasn't on the agenda. Not even, okay. okay. Um, if, if you had listed only, you know, review of, uh, it, yeah. it's the tricky thing about listing things specifically. If you leave something out, then it's. Okay. It's not, well, it's then. There. Instead of bringing two different rounds to the council, because this does feel, um, I'd like to postpone then this decision or the vote uh, uh, on a recommendation to our next meeting and so I can have everything included. Does that make sense, folks? I, I would say we just deal with these now and then put on the next meeting the other one. You can report them all okay. at once, but we're here. Okay. We might as well just make the vote. Gotcha. All right. So... Uh, Mandy, you want to make a motion? So I think if I heard you right, I'm I'm going to move that GOL recommends the council take no action in response to the bylaw review committee recommendations on 
general bylaws 3.7 licenses yep. and permits 3.2 special board of appeals and 3.36 soliciting section e okay second okay let's do a vote on that mandy thanks for uh, stating it so well um mandy joe haneke aye lynn griesmer aye michelle miller aye did I skip you last time? No. Okay. Jennifer Taw? Yes. And I'm an I. So that passes unanimously. Okay. Yeah. To... All right. Um, blah, blah, blah. So it looks to me, I will get in touch with the town manager and try to get an update. I know that DEI is working on several of them with the Human Rights Commission. So, um, okay, I'd like to look at the Medicare for All. I believe that's, um, yes, Lynn? Yeah, I ran into one of the community sponsors and got the sense that they wanted to withdraw this and come back with a different one. Has anybody heard anything about that? I haven't heard from Barbara Pearson at all about that. So I'm one of the council sponsors and she has not contacted me. Yeah. The last I had heard from, from her, there was, yeah, no change that I was aware of. <laughs> I've, I've got some modifications to the one that is being yeah, I bet. <laughs> as a sponsor, <laughs> but um, I have not heard from Barbara recently. Okay. Um. Well, um, I'll leave it. Jennifer? I mean, she lives down the block. Should I ask her? <laughs> is, that, <laughs> you, is that a, I mean. Yeah, text her or whatever. Yeah. No, I don't maybe. know if that's formal. But. It, so there are three council sponsors. So if the community sponsor wants to withdraw, they can withdraw their name. But you, you have council sponsors. And under our rules, unless all three council sponsors withdraw, it's not withdrawn, even if it doesn't have a community sponsor. Gotcha. But if they wanted to propose changes, well, then they, they should, should talk to the, the council meeting. sponsors at this they point. They should talk to the council sponsors. Okay. <laughs> well, I will. I guess we're going to take it off the agenda because but do unless you want Mandy... me to just ping her and ask her to get in touch with the council sponsor? Yeah, you can do that. Okay. Um, but I don't. And I can do that too. Yeah. Uh, or somebody could do that. Yeah. She's generally been in good contact with us. So, yeah. It's so, surprising to hear she. I I mean I don't want to mislead you. I'm just saying I did see her and she mentioned something um, about one of the other people uh, involved wants a whole different motion. So I was actually in the process as we started speaking of sending her an email and including uh, the rest of GOL on the email. Um, if you would like me to proceed, I'll be glad to. If not, I'm also glad not to. So I'm okay as a sponsor holding off on this one more GOL meeting. Um, but I, Lynn, I would caution you including GOL on anything because you it's in front of GOL. So that might be an OML violation. Thank you. But yeah, I would say if you spoke to her, that would make sense for you to follow up. Okay. Okay. All right, so let's remove it from today's agenda. Oh, I like this. <laughs> Only way to hold a meeting. <laughs> yeah, get rid of everything. <laughs> well, I, I do want to hold the time starting at 1030 so Anna can join us about the uh, reproductive and gender um, by law that she and Mandy are proposing. So, and I said I would do that. So I'm going to do that. Um, and I guess we, I, we're we ready then to go, unless there's something on the agenda I'm missing, I we're ready to go back to the rules of procedure. Um, Michelle, I just saw your hand up. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, would you be willing to to take the suicide prevention at this at this time, um, or would you prefer to wait until? Next no, time? that that's fine. If it really is just a date change, uh, it's just the yeah. That's all. That's all that I. Athena, I don't take a minute uh, to look at it. 
Can we do that, Athena? It is on the agenda, but I don't know. I just okay. Lynn, is that all right, Athena? Uh, would you just send that email, Lynn? It's on yes. the agenda, so you it's. I, so I, even I just we think got it, it, ought, the it ought to be plate. sent to counselors as a referral to GOL. Okay. Oh, right, Lynn Hudson. Got it. I Thank sent you. it to you, Lynn. Yeah. I got it. Thank you. Yeah. Then go ahead. Um, I'll pull it up. Okay. One question I have. Oh, in twenty twenty. Is there any, Michelle, I have a question on the one, two, third, whereas, sure. is there any updated figure uh, in or? Um, not, I don't know. I mean, potentially I could, I could probably find one, um, but I, I, I don't know if it's necessary, but yeah, it's only three years ago, but yeah, I think I mean, there probably is an updated figure, but when I did it last year, this was the earliest one that I could find. Okay, great. Thank so. you. Uh, well, unless somebody is seeing something that I'm not noticing in my very quick read. Okay. Now it be resolved. Why is that? Mandy? Um, a, a couple of questions and, and comments. So it needs the bottom part of Lynn's signature right. or whatever, voted whatever. Um, but all of these are resolved clauses at the end, but it's called a proclamation. It sounds like it might be more suited for a resolution. So awareness month resolution instead of proclamation. We're actually not in any of this proclaiming any particular month suicide awareness, uh, suicide prevention awareness month. Um, we're resolving to commit to support bills and to send the resolution on. So I think retitling it a resolution instead of a proclamation would be more appropriate. Um, I have a question just, Michelle, you said you updated the dates. Um, did you update the bill numbers? Yeah, that's right. In the uh, second resolved, do, are those last session's bill numbers or are those this session's bill oh, numbers? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, hang yes, on. yes, we can. <laughs> I was looking at my, um, that's a really great question. I didn't look at that, uh, Mandy. So if there are updated uh, bill numbers, um, they these would need to be updated. So I'm happy, I'm happy to do that even while I could try to do it while we're here. Um, otherwise, if it's fine, I think um, to bring this to the next meeting as well. So I'm for me, whatever people think would be best is fine. Is fine with me. I would say I, it's a simple search on on the exactly yeah legislature's website. We wait the thirty seconds to a minute for Michelle to update them. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's sure. fine. Go sure. for it, Michelle. Okay, I'll do that. And, and if you want to just keep, if you want me to do it right now and then, uh, yeah, okay. yeah. all right, all right, perfect. Just give me one second. Thank you. Was there consensus about changing it to a resolution? Uh, it's fine with me. How would you like that worded? Do you want do you want to just change this one word or? Uh, <laughs> I guess I don't know, Mandy. You're good with that. Should it be a resolution in I, support? I, I I think just changing the word is fine. Michelle's got last say as sponsor. Yeah. I hate that it's spam. <laughs> Actually, I was thinking of suggesting getting rid of the acronym. Yeah, I because <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's used anywhere else. We'll wait for Michelle on that. Lynn, do you have your hand up? I do. Yeah. I think in the third whereas there needs to be a comma after 2020. Yes. 
And oh, there is a comma. Oh no, you just added it. Okay. It's it looks like yeah. there's a lot of commas, but have me you need one. I could use a little help here. I'm just I'm looking at like for example, um the the first one that is, is mentioned, Bill 250. And when I pull it up, I'm not seeing that it just it just says um that bill s250 uh no further it's in the senate but like no further action has been taken on it so hey, um michelle let me see if i can help you since i do a lot of searching on state thank you <laughs> thank you i really appreciate it um i have pulled up the m the mass legislature.gov uh you know page on this one but i i'm not finding there are similar bills you know that that we see here but they're not and see, that's a lot of times, let me, let me just keep looking and other people go ahead and do what they need to do. And then um, Bill H2081. Yeah, I, I mean, there are many bills in the current session. They're not going to be under that number. You just have to search for the title. Right. Because the title probably didn't change. But there's a lot that have suicide prevention in their title. I see, yeah. I see. Okay, I for some reason thought that maybe it would like on that history page <laughs> uh, take you to the next one, but I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay, so. Yeah, you've got a ton in the house and. Yes. So maybe okay. this is worth, I don't know, maybe this mean, means a lot to me and, and I, and I just failed to get it with everything going on and to you, to you all in yeah, time. Yeah. Um, why don't I, if it's okay, just uh, rework, figure that all out, what bills are there and, and then um, bring it back for the next meeting, if that's okay. That's that, fine. Uh, Michelle, just let me mention that the, the bills that I would look at now yeah. are House 1548. Okay, I'm, t I'm getting and, the, okay, 1548. And Senate 973. Okay. Uh, because in that both of them are kind of the broad bills and then the other bills are much are things about things like signage related to public health uh, so there's a lot there yeah and with what uh, Mandy pointed out about this being more of a resolution I think I'm even more motivated to like look at that more closely so um, thank you Michelle thank you for the time yeah Michelle, I, I um, I'll send you this track change version with the with the edits that the committee's made so far, so that you can work from that. That would be awesome. Thanks a lot. Uh, and before we leave, is there anything else that anybody saw that needs changing, like spam or the comma? Okay. All right. Oh, the signage at the bottom and and the letterhead. Yeah. The yeah. Um. I mean, one of the options um, is, in fact, to waive that we recommend uh, and then put it on the agenda for the 11th. How do people feel about that? Because we don't meet again until, I believe, the 13th. I mean, I would say it depends on... I, I don't have a problem waving. I just don't want to put that pressure on Michelle to get it done by the 11th if she's looking at redoing it. And if it is done by the 11th, you know, I don't think we have to vote to w recommend waiver, right? Um, but if it's not, it could come back on the 13th to GOL. We don't have to vote to recommend waiver. The council would have to vote to waive, but Lynn does that all the time based on her duty as president to decide whether it should be on or not i would leave it up to michelle not to oh. add pressure of like we're going to recommend so that it gets on there but no i michelle would suggest be. that michelle if you can find the right bills that you want listed here and you can get it to athena and i by next wednesday we can put the waiver on the um consent agenda and the resolution okay perfect perfect thank you jennifer i saw your hand pop up no, I was just thinking that we we meet a second time in September. So even if Michelle didn't make the 11th, right. 
Yeah, but it's kind of late in September yeah. and it's the month of September. So the earlier, I think, the better. But yeah, I hear you. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think there's that much uh, that's going to be changed. There may be additions or something, but okay. All right, then I guess we're ready to move on to rules of procedure. And as again, wherever we are in that discussion, I'm going to break it off when uh, uh, Anna joins us. And then we'll go do the reproductive care. Mandy? I just have a question. And this is, uh, there's also the charter chain, the charter review committee. Oh, right. And I didn't know that that first. which one we're giving up today. I it, I yeah. don't care which one, but but <laughs> it was the intention to- Let's look at the charter review. review. The yes, I think that's, let's do that. So I just had a question, if I could, just overall, isn't mm -hmm. this already, can we, how do we, we come about to change this? Because isn't this in the charter, what the charter review committee does? That was just, I mean, just for clarification, I, I was wondering about that. The actual language that's in the uh, charter is in this charge. Right. And basically all it says is, they have to, it, we have to do it in every year that ends in four and it has to be a committee of people that are no longer, that are not presently in elected positions. That's so what can we change about it? I guess that's well, my question. This is where I'm, I'm also going to talk with, you know, ask Mandy Joe to chime in, but I spent a fair amount of time on the phone with the man who, from the Collins Institute, who advised the charter commission when they were doing this. Uh, it was an incredibly useful phone call. The reality is that what you cannot change is the form of government, which in this case is a manager council form of government. You cannot change the number of counselors and you can't change the length of our terms. Too bad. But other than that, there's now, and if you wanted to change some of those things, there are one one of them would require an entire new charter commission but beyond that there are ways to file certain bills that you can change some things as well mandy joe i'm i'm calling on mandy joe but because that, she she really that's fine lynn not i don't have any reason i like working that way so don't worry about it mandy so i think jennifer's question was what what can we say in a charge, right? Like, is it right. the, the charge, charge is set written. out in the charter? And it's not really set out in the charter. The background part of this, this draft um, quotes basically the entire charter section um, of section 9.6. And as you see, it just says the council establishes a special committee um, a for a review of the charter. And so beyond the charge requiring a review of the charter, we can add stuff of what they want to do or not, but the charge has to require a review of the charter, but we can say you need to do public outreach. Um, okay. If we want it specifically titled in there, but we can't remove review of the charter, <laughs> you know, and we can't change the one year deadline, um, you know, it says, you know, not holding elective office. So we can't allow a composition that would say one current town counselor because that would violate the charter. So, so we have to okay. comply with that background section, but beyond that, the town council makes the committee so it can do other things. And I just want to say, I sent a whole lot of recommended changes off to Athena and um, Pat. Um, and I will go through them here, but Athena does have a track change version as we talk about it, if she wants to do it, but I understand why it's not in the packet and not put up. If, if it's okay with everyone, we can, um, I can bring that up and we can work from that. I just wanted to make sure that that's. I think that would be most efficient, uh, but before that, Michelle. Yeah, just a quick, more general question. So like these criteria that are listed, like having had previous Amherst Charter Commission experience, knowledge of the town of Amherst departments and services, 
Lynn, did you just add those as criteria? They didn't come from anywhere. Okay. So we can either include, not include, we can add to, okay, great. My goal was to get something out so we could start the conversation so we could get it done. The only thing we can't change in composition is that they have to be voters not holding elective office when right. appointed. Right. So unfortunately, because of the way the charter is written, we can't have non-voters on this committee. And we regularly probably appoint non-voters to committees in town. But this is not one where we can do that. Yeah. And uh, so school committee and town council are off the table, but committee members uh, say in the housing trust or the uh, um, AHR, mm -hmm. you know, um, reparations committee could be on this. That's yeah. it. Uh, Jennifer? The, under name. Oh, go ahead, Lynn and then Jennifer. I'm sorry, just very quick. I didn't catch this before I sent it off. Under name, it should say charter review committee. That's the word that's used in the. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. In the rules, in our, I mean, in our charter. So yeah. do we want to do 2024 Charter Review Commission Committee? That um, makes sense. Here so that it's, because there will be future ones. Mm -hmm. Works for me. So do we want to set your hand up? Jennifer, sorry. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, oh, I know. Um, Michelle, two questions. Michelle had asked the question during the council meeting. If you're an if you're a current councilor that's not running for re-election, could you be considered? I guess it says it can't be a current office holder, but if you're not going to be an office holder when the it depends when they're appointed. Yeah. So if the appointments happen before the end of this council's term, then a, a counselor who's currently serving as counselor can't be appointed. But if it's after the new year and the new counselor has been seated, then um, they could be appointed. But the charter says not currently holding elective office. So even if you weren't on the, the council where you'd be voting on it. Okay. Then my other question is, I, I don't think you need, I have, I'm uncomfortable with it. You need to have previous Amher Charter Commission experience. I mean, that seems to really limit the pool of who would be eligible. And I think there's people that may have become involved in town government, you know, since we've had this new form of government that weren't involved previously. May I speak to that for a moment? That yes, wasn't to say everybody had to have it. It was to only say that among the group, it would be good to have one of them. Maybe it needs to be wordsmith. And maybe you all just okay. want to eliminate all of them. Thank you. And before we go to that, though, I I want to see I want to hear Mandy Joe talk about term of appointment because I think there's some serious logic to that. Yeah, I, I'm happy to talk about all obviously everything that is in here. I'll I'll talk about what's on the page first. Um, so through composition, so um, the legal reference is also the charter. So I added the charter sections in there. Uh, the term of appointment, the January one, I put the comment in of we could consider a different date. That's that's something that I think we as a GOL need to talk about for exactly what I think Jennifer and Michelle have asked, which is um, current counselors who may not be elected, whether they're running or not, right? Um, who may not be in the next term, would we want to be able to consider them for appointment. And if so, the appointment date can't be January 1 right. uh, because we're all still there. And, and then the next question I have that, that I wanted to talk about with that is, is it better for us as a council to adopt the charge and then leave the next council to actually do the interviewing and appointing? We just have to get those appointed by the end of 2024 and, and then um, and so I think it's good for us to adopt a charge, but I'm worried that it might be better for the next council to do the appointments, do the interviews, do the appointments, make the appointments, because they'll still, that's the council that's getting the report. 
um, in theory, unless they extend well beyond their own term, right? The the they they have the opportunity to extend by the charter. Um, but you know, and so I think we need to talk about that. And then the other half of that term of appointment is we don't know because there's that extension possibility. One year is not necessarily if we put one year in there, the council, if the committee seeks extension of the report deadline, which they have the right to under the charter, we then have to, the council would then have to um, vote to extend their terms. And so if if we put the term of appointment in the charter, in this charge as through the presentation of the final report, um, I think we, the council would eliminate a potential need to extend terms and one more vote. Um, and then the composition, I didn't touch the composition, um, I, but that doesn't mean I like it as it is. I just thought we would talk about that completely. But that highlight there, the only thing I, I thought is the members maintain regular attendance. We never put that in charges before. It seems kind of obvious and it's not really a composition part. It's more of a expectation of members, but it seems kind of weird to me to be putting that in a charge when we've never put that in a charge before. Uh, Jennifer, and then we'll come back to that, Mandy. Yeah, I th I was thinking that also if the next council should actually do the interviewing and appointments, I think, and not for this reason, but with the school appointments, do we have time to do this? You know, if there's only like three months left of the, yeah. <laughs> we'll be meeting on weekends. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Um, <laughs> I think that um, we should change the, uh, start date and day, um, term of appointment um, ASAP. <laughs> Lynn? I like the change. I, I really do. Um, and I think an April 1st is a, a good um, target. And let's also remember that the next council, even if we adopt this charge, they can always bring it back and change it again before they go out. As long as the work starts in 2024, we're okay. Right. Uh, and I'm assuming that's calendar year, not fiscal year. Am I wrong or right about that? Because it's the year ending in four. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, and does do we want to look at criteria right now in terms of composition? Are there suggestions there? Oh, and well, let's go back to whether or not we want all members need to maintain regular. I think that should be removed. Let's get there first because that we brought that up and we didn't talk about it. How do people feel about that? Take it out. Yeah, is that all right with everyone? I was just gonna add. Um, so I I agree that it 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 doesn't seem like it's the right place for it. But is there? So this uh, meeting's expected to be at least two times per month. Does that come from some expectation in the charter or like, mm -hmm. could the committee decide they want to meet every day and get it done in a month? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so do you just put that, Lynn, that was your. <laughs> I threw it out there. I, I will tell you that um, the gentleman from the Collins Institute did share with me several other charter charges and uh, particularly one that he shared was one that they're consulting with right now, and that's Framingham. And I, I don't know where I picked up. Some of this I picked up from them. Okay. So I'm fine taking it out. Mandy? Oh, I would be fine. Obviously, I'm fine taking it out. I kind of suggested it. Um, mm -hmm. Two times per month is probably likely, in order to get this done, the least they'll have to do, um, given my experience <laughs> on the 18 month charter commission, um, although they get extensions. So it, they mm -hmm. they might choose two a month and then to just ask the council for an extension. But I actually wanted to bring up something else, Go um, ahead. which is the number of voting members. I don't think, I, I'm, I'm not seeing that that nine is required by the charter. 
Nope. And so do we want to talk about the appropriate number? I I will say nine sounds logical. At the same time, I'm worried that we won't have even nine people apply, but um, maybe we'll have 20. I don't know. Um, but but I, I just thought I'd bring that up that we don't have to accept nine. And so I'd love to hear other members and what their thoughts are with nine, seven, 11, pick a number, right? Um, what are people's thoughts? Jennifer? Um, I like nine. I think it means there could be a real good cross section of the community. I actually think there are going to be applicants. I, I think there's a lot of interest in looking at the charter. So I'm optimistic about that. Michelle, thank you. Is there a, are, could we put in nine or 11? Like it, does it have to be one number now for the charge or could based on, you know, the amount of applicants, could it be determined? Um, I, I think nine for a committee, it just, it feels like a lot of people, but for this, it makes sense that we would have that amount of people. Um, but is there like any limitation on leaving that more open until we have a better sense or does that sort of set up a, a weird precedent? It people feels a little odd to me, Michelle, yeah. because what if, what if we have 30 people apply? Yeah. Do we want all of a sudden to have stick with 11 not, or go to 27 or right, right. <laughs> and, and I'm really trying to figure all out. 30. <laughs> the other thing is, I think that because of what can't be changed, a lot of the energy around the charter has to do with number of counselors and uh, length of terms and and even the form of government. And those are things that this committee cannot deal with. Um so it, it, I don't, I don't know. I feel funny about saying nine to 11. I, I, I would rather have nine. And then if there's an in, intense amount of interest, the new council can say, oh, let's have 12 or 13 or whatever. I don't know. Uh, Lynn and then Athena. Athena has her hand up and I always want to defer to what her wisdom is on yeah. this. That's, uh, that's scary. <laughs> the, um <laughs> So if, if the committee's intent is to set this charge up for the next council, it doesn't mean that the charge is set in stone. If the next council sees it and they go, you know, we, we feel strongly that we want to change this particular section or these words or, or the composition, then they can go back and do it. They would just go and amend the charge um, before they make appointments or after they make appointments. So um, if the intent is to set this up and have it ready for the next council, I would say pick a number. Then my suggestion, I'm going to let you speak, Lynn, but is to stick with nine. Let's make this process for us right now as simple as possible. Lynn? Um, I think I chose nine because the original charter commission had nine. And I think when you start getting to 11, it becomes unwieldy to hold meetings, make sure you have quorums. So again, I think, Pat, you just said it. Let's make it simple. Put it in as nine, see what the next council does. Is that, uh, and people in agreement with that? I, yeah. So uh, go, um, Mandy or anyone else, you have another issue that you're seeing? I mean, we're going to have to talk about the com composition yeah. section. So let's do that now. So uh, go ahead, who's uh, Michelle and then Mandy. I just wanted to generally say that I, I appreciate having um, desired experience in a charge and I feel that it um, can also be limiting um, or appear to be limiting. And so I've struggled with that, like if in terms of our DEI goals and things like that, how do we, um, how do we use that lens when we're considering this composition? 
I'm I'm wondering just very quickly looking at this, and it may not address it, but um, let me see. In addition, the membership shall reflect the diversity of the town of Amherst population. To me, that should be the first nine residents per charter section, blah, blah, blah. And then immediately go to the membership shall reflect the diversity of the town of Amherst population. Um, I like that. Yeah, I agree. Is that all right with uh, folk? Because that is something that we have to really. It's not an afterthought. It's the first thing. Right, right. I, I think if Athena's wondering, we would delete everything starting with the word among to the word in addition so that it would just be one sentence. Thank you. Th that just starts with the membership shall reflect. Yeah, and get rid of in addition. It's, and yeah. that, that includes a whole diversity. Oh. Yeah. That in, diversity's in, we, we use that for very different for a wide variety of diversity, diversity of views, diversity of resident location and town, everything, right? So. And if people are comfortable with that, let's look at then what we're saying. Um, I'm sitting here thinking um, about Amherst youth. Um, this is their charter too, uh, but they're not they're not uh, voters yet if they're under eighteen. Um, hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I'm just thinking of a couple of uh, people that I don't know. I don't know. Well, diversity could include age, so. Um, yeah, I think we can leave that with that being the first sentence. So we struck out among the residents, there shall be. Uh, what part of that, what we struck, do we want to keep after the statement? It needs to reflect the diversity of the town. Mandy? So I would almost not put any of it in uh. and leave it up to the committee to the, the next council to decide what's important um mm -hmm. because you can name a whole lot of things but if i think back to the last charter commission um there were members on there that had no governmental experience whatsoever and some that had very little and some that had a lot in various types of elected positions um you know, and and I think, you know, the electorate ended up electing a very diverse, in some in in some manners diverse, and in others you could argue maybe not so diverse. But they did end up electing a diverse set of views and a diverse set of experiences, and trying to set forth and list which ones are most important. I think is difficult, and so I would just keep it out completely. I feel comfortable with that. Uh, anyone else want to speak to that? Lynn? I'm fine with that. Okay. Jennifer? I, I, I agree. Yeah. And I saw you nodding, Michelle. So I think that we can do that. Uh, I'm going to step away for half a second. And Jennifer, can you take over for a minute? I'll be right uh, back. Yes. Okay. So are we moving down to background? Yes. Um, first part can't be changed. It's in the charter. <laughs> yeah. The town. So but there's really the whole first part, unless you want to change lead in sentences like periodic review of the charter requires that uh, it's straight out of the charter. Okay. So let's go down to purpose or do we want to add? I guess we can add anything. It's in the charter. Is this the end of the charter quote here? Because you have an open quote here. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Thanks. So I'm just going to add that quote mark. Um, you. you need a period at, at where you just added. Yeah. yeah. I have a random question. The chart, this committee will have a budget. So like they could retain a consultant. 
from the Collins Institute? Okay. One has to assume that they will. So that's, you so know. So I'm not sure it's in a in the current fiscal year's budget. So it would be uh, up to the council to recommend that the manager include a budget uh, or put it into the council's budget for the year or include it in something. The last charter commission had to actually bring um, warrant articles forward to town meeting to get its budget to hire a consultant. Okay, so, so whoever's on finance, Lynn is on finance, make a note to Andy to, to make a note for our budget guidelines that that money money should be provided. It would not be available to July 1, but um, things could be in motion to hire or we could extend, we could change the April 1 date to May or June 1. Um, April 1, I actually think is quite tight for a council that's coming in to organize its committees and then set forth advertising and interviews and then get a, appointments done by the end of March. Is there a staff liaison to this or is it, that's the idea is to be separate? Uh, right now I listed uh, the clerk of the town council um, and uh, that it, so it's the town manager or designate, there has to be a staff liaison. It has to, I thought so. Okay. So I think uh, going back to that one, we could actually either designate town manager or designate or ourselves designate clerk of the council because the town council is the hiring authority for the clerk of the council. So we have, we, we are allowed to add duties to that. So if we wanted it to be the clerk, I think we can just set forth clerk of the town council. Agreed. Is that okay with you, Athena? <laughs> yep. Yeah, I've already had a conversation with Paul about that. Okay. And I consulted her, so. <laughs> Good. Jennifer, you can keep going. Okay, we had, uh, we were at background. No? No, we're at purpose. I'm sorry. Okay. Any... We're all good with that? I think so. Yeah, okay, so now we're a charge. And if if Great. I may- I jump in. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, sorry, I just yeah. wanted, Michelle, may I just explain of my course, charge of course. ones? Um, it might be easier to look at the charge changes in you know, simplified form, but basically I tried to just condense stuff. So I, I thought that all of the dates were a little bit too prescriptive, that there were too many things. So, so you'll see a lot of condensing of analyzing feedback prior to X, Y, and Z actions, taking reporting three times and things like that. So, so there's, there's a lot of deletions and changes, but I tried not to delete anything that was actually proposed in the charge, but combine it so it was a little less prescriptive as to dates and a little more open for choices. So it's really, it's not gonna, substantive. Hey, oh. <laughs> no, no, go, go, Michelle. I was just on the purpose before we get to the charge real quick. Um, I just had a question. I know there are the three things that we, that this body is unable to do. Is that has that been, do we desire to have that listed up front anywhere or within the purpose to say, or is that? That's why I put an asterisk, which is at the very bottom. Right. Got it. Okay. That's good. Yep. Now, let, let me just mention, um, first of all, Mandy Joe, thank you for, you know, taking on this section. I actually totally agree with everything you've done, but I do want the committee to know that what drove what I wrote in this section was in fact the Framingham process. So it it reflects what another community that's a year ahead of us is looking at with regard to their process. Great. So Pat, I mean, um, Athena, I like looking at it without having to look at all the lines. <laughs> I mean, what I really liked about the Framingham process was there was a number of times that there was specific outreach and um, a way in which the and the the, the 
former charter commission uh, that did the charter that we now have did this. They had enormous opportunity for public comment and consultation with different groups, including the seated body of the select board. So um, it, it the fact that counselors that are seated at the time of this um, can't be on the committee doesn't mean they can't speak and it can't doesn't mean they won't be consulted. Um, it also really, really, uh, you know, sets up a net mechanism using lots of public input. Yeah, I'm totally comfortable with the dates not being there because then they'd almost formally have to be changed and, right. and they're not going to be Absolutely. met. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we should move down to reports. This is picky, um, real quick. On uh, it, it for under the could you scroll back up a, a little bit? Um, on the committee shall do we need that too? No, we don't. This no, is really right. bothering me. <laughs> it's not picky, That's right? It's GOL's <laughs> job to be that picky. <laughs> Good catch, Michelle. I totally get it. <laughs> you get you get the GOL at a, a board for the time. Yeah, <laughs> for the day. Yeah. Okay. I'm fine with that. I really am. It looks great. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I. Are we at 1030 now? Yeah. I don't know so, if Juan is here, but. I don't know. May not. I don't see her. Okay. So we can keep going. Oh, and then your ask direct is at the bottom. So we, should we only have one section left for the report section. Yeah. Well, let's finish this up. Yeah, let's finish yeah, it. Please. Okay. <laughs> That seems fine. So this should match April 1, 2025. And then if the next council wants to change mm -hmm. or the appointment day changes, then we do that, correct? Yep. And so if we approve, this goes back to the council at the next meeting? Yes. Okay. And, and then, and based on that, all we would then have to do is approve the charge and then it sits there until the new council is elected, right? Maybe the council no. the council could also vote on SME status. Yeah. Yeah. I mean yes. until the new Adopt council when, when the in. council adopts the charge. The well, uh, count, right. Right. Although it's possible uh, again, I Jennifer, I think you put your finger on it with everything else the the council has to get done between now and then. The other thing that we possibly could do is begin to set up some kind of process whereby people apply, but frankly I think we we've done our job. <laughs> I, I agree. If we get this charge finished. So, so do we want oh Mandy? So so I was gonna say we could recommend that the council at least publish the notice in in on the bulletin board of vacancies for it if we adopt the charge so that the other the next council can immediately move into sort of closing and 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 the rest of the section of appointments right um on on our appointment process on whatever it's doing but they don't have to wait that 14 or 21 days the whole time right um because we'd already have that notice out there um yeah and, and i mean they don't have to do with that part of it then Right. And I mean, think about the notice that we just agreed to on Monday night. We could get all of that ready for people and, you know, decide, are we going to do statements of interest and, you know, consistent with other policies and so forth. But I, um, anyway, Mandy Jo. I, I actually you... think we are, I'd have to look, but the policy the council adopted for multiple member bodies might actually apply to these appointments. Yeah. Which so it would be assigning a committee to do the the recommendation side, but mm. you mean one of the standing committees of the council? Yeah, yeah. And in this case, it would probably be GOL. 
it yeah. would probably be GOL. And yeah. so GOL could start the process by getting a notice to the bulletin board and posting the notice, but not, you know, in other processes, we never have a close date of that notice because we wait until the pool is sufficient. So GOL could start collecting stuff and everything, but not move beyond that um, if GOL has time. In some sense, potentially to help the next council mm -hmm. begin the yep. process quicker. So if we approve this today and it goes to the council, <clears throat> does the council have to then formally ask us to do what Mandy just laid out? Or, I mean, do they have to send it back to GOL? <laughs> uh, no, they don't have to. Uh, I mean, but, but no, can it, can we do that without the council formally authorizing us? That's what I'm asking. Um, it depends on what our charge says. Ooh. Our charge might cover that one. Let me look. That's sometimes a question I always have with GOL. Does it always have to go to the council before it comes to GOL? Um, uh, GOL is charged with making recommendations to the town council regarding appointments by the town council for non-voting liaisons, non-voting finance committee. No, it lists. lists the specific bodies the GOL makes recommendations to the council. And this isn't one of the listed ones? No. So we would have to, the council will have to vote to charge a committee with making the recommendations. So I can try and craft a multimodal motion here. That'd be great. That'd be great. Thank because you. Because I have at least two things that we're talking about. So go ahead. Yeah, so um, let me try something. I move to to recommend the council adopt the 2024 Charter Review Committee charge as amended um, to recommend the council vote the 20... 24 Charter Review Committee to have SME status and the council vote to or recommend the council vote um, to assign or to charge the GOL committee with making recommendations for appointments to the 2024 Charter Review Committee. Is there a second? Second, second. to okay. okay, so we'll move to a vote. I'm just, um, I should do it alphabetically. Hmm. Yes, uh, Pat. Aye. Uh, Lynn. Aye. Mandy. Aye. And Michelle. Aye. And I'm an aye. Yay, we got this done. Yeah. So Athena, we can put this on the agenda for the 11th. And I've made a note, and I hope Athena has too, that FinCom include in its budget guidelines um, that the FY25 budget include money to support the Charter Review Committee. I do have that. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jennifer. You want to keep going? <laughs> no, I just have a question. If Anna's not here, and it's along the lines of of how um, uh, it, you know, how um, items of business proceed from other committees to GOL. So if I can ask it, we had a um, the sponsors of the waste hauler bylaw had a meeting with Paul this week, and then Shalini had a question. We have a timeline. If we have revised bylaw proposed language before the end of the calendar, during this council session, can that go directly from TSO to GOL or does it have to go to the council to GOL? I know this on the agenda, but she asked if I'd ask this question. So I'd, I'd have to go back and look at the charge. I'm look at the referral. Um, and cause Athena, I'm looking at you for this because 
I believe I, I was the referral to ask TSO to develop a bylaw. And if it was, then generally that bylaw, that should have also been referred to finance committee because of looking at the financial impact of a bylaw. Um, so Athena's looking it up. And then, um, no, I don't want to go any further because that's not the role of GOL. Yeah, I also just texted Anna <coughs> to tell her we were getting ready to work. Um, Jennifer, your question is if GOL, um, if the council made a referral to TSO and also GOL when TSO's recommendations were complete. Um, GOL is charged with reviewing bylaws before they go to the council. And and under our rules, all bylaws are automatically referred to GOL. Okay, great. But did just, that did the motion for waste hauler include finance? Yes, I think it. I, I, I so um, it will still go to finance. This was just if we have some language, could it go to GOL for review before it goes back to the council? It but it automatically does. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because the Thank original you. proposal that sent to TSO was a proposal was a measure proposing a bylaw change, and so under our rules, it would have automatically also been referred to GOL once it got referred somewhere else. Okay, good. Thank you. That's, that's, I, that's the I'm easy sorry. part. Go ahead, Lynn, or whoever. I said that's the easy part of it. The GOL, it's making sure it also, we it doesn't automatically get referred to finance. Right, um, but it has I, been referred to finance. Oh, definitely. I just got a text from Anna. She's having trouble. People aren't quite leaving her workshop yet, so she'll be a few minutes. So, so we could sing. Okay. We could <laughs> just do rules until she can come. Um, it did. The motion did include a referral to GOL. Yeah. Um, and TSO uh, in consultation with Finance Committee. So everybody's there. Except okay. CRC. Okay. Okay. Which we don't mind being left out of that one. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> I see no enthusiasm there. <laughs> so we can continue the rules of procedure until on yeah. is available. Um, we should probably start looking at uh where did i put uh athena's so, is that the ch so we're going to the chart okay yeah no what, what do you mean going to the chart no no i'm sorry i was in the packet we had um we have clerk of the review bylaw actions we're yeah. not going yeah no we're doing rules of procedure jennifer okay Oh, I see. Okay. Next item in the packet. Okay. Now, where did I? I thought I put uh, her packet in the, in our packet again. But... Athena's no. memo was in it. Didn't we have a discussion? Didn't we start a discussion on this? Yes, we did. That's why I'm trying to yeah. What we started talking about was the uh, posting of agenda packets. And I don't remember, this is why I, I uh, whether we got to the consent agenda or not. No, I don't think so. I'm just, um, do you want to look at the memo or do you want to look at the rules document? Uh -huh. So this is what we were discussing and we didn't resolve it. How right. soon? Items have to be in the packet. Okay. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna. I'm just gonna pull up the rules. I think that makes more sense. Okay. Uh, 
And are, are some of the changes that we made there? This is where the where the discussion ended, but uh, yeah. there was no recommendation at the last meeting. Right. Well, do we want to make a recommendation? <laughs> make a recommendation on section four point five. Because it, can it I does... ask a question about how we're doing recommendations? Because Athena, this is the document that's got everything we've sort of talked about, but haven't voted on as a whole yet, right? Does it? I think I thought I took the most recent because we had been working from an old version of the rules. Right. Oh, OK. There weren't recommendations. So I have a different version of the rules with a bunch of edits. This one just has the ones that we're working with right now. It's up to the committee how you want to. Um, sorry about scrolling all over the place. If, if I just didn't know to... what our plan as GOL was. Are we going to be voting as a package everything we've been working on, or are we voting things individually? That's what it seems to be evolving to, but I would love some input on that. And I also want to uh, go back to something that we decided. Uh, uh, not right now, but I want to go back to public comment because. Um, and Anna is here, Pat. I see. Oh, great. All right. <laughs> All right. So why don't we move forward with um, that and come back to this? I'm sorry, Athena, you just were able to pull it up. So, okay. Um, okay. So, well, I'm bringing Anna. Bring Anna in. Yeah, great. Hey, Anna, not yet. I don't know what's going on. I've tried to, there right. she is. There she is. Oh, great. Hey, Anna. Welcome. Oh my gosh, doing this from my phone is like a whole other ball game. Oh, oh weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I would love to see this. Bible. You're out in the rain. <laughs> we, we, you're muted. You're muted. I am out in the rain, and I hope you enjoy my backdrop, which is my very festive umbrella. <laughs> Um, I would love to hear uh, where you and Mandy are on this, and I would like to get this by law to council as soon as possible. Um, so, and sure. the last time, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, so I think that my understanding is after the first uh, GOL review, Mandy and I met with the legal team. I'm going to walk away from the road, sorry. Um, and, and I met with the the folks at KP Law um, and talked through where their concerns were with the bylaw. There were some areas that, you know, uh, that we made changes on based on their concerns. And then the other areas they were just pointing out, you know, is this really what you want the scope to be? And the conversation that Mandy and I had was, yes, that we want this bylaw to be broad because we believe that it's important for our town to protect our people, right? Um, and so based on that, we made some changes and I believe it then went back to you. Um, and I apologize that I wasn't able to come to the last conversation about it. Um, I believe Pat, you had said that you had wanted it to go to KP Law again. Um, um, I didn't say I did, but I thought that was the decision that was made on- The, the committee, the committee did. Yeah. Um, and so I, We'll now turn it to Mandy because I'm not actually sure where where it's coming now. Yeah. So so I guess it's it's Pat because Pat was going to send it back to KP Law and Paul 
for well ask Paul to send it back to KP law and I I haven't heard so I I don't know what the status of the next KP law review is that the committee had asked for that and makes Lynn, me feel better because I hadn't either and Lynn you brought up the issue I believe do you want to speak to it again and because I I I hope I can remember everything I said um I believe that the reason I brought it up was because of some changes, but also because of what Northampton, I mean, East Hampton, um, the controversy that they have going on there uh, and whether or not it flies in the face of any state laws. That's all. It's not because I don't support it. It's because I just want us to um, be as consistent as we can, I, which I think we have been. So, um, yeah. Go ahead. I can East Hampton's bylaws is, is about a completely different topic. So East Hampton's bylaw included elements of this, but their bylaw was really about crisis pregnancy centers. That's at the heart of a lot of the controversy controversies that's happening around the state right now. Um, and ours really intentionally removed that uh, from from the initial draft. Right. Um, we wanted to we wanted to pass something and not. Uh, and so we separated out to this out to be about one really important element and i don't want to understate the importance of fighting back against crisis pregnancy centers because i do believe that that is absolutely important and we need to do it but i don't want that fight to delay really important work on access to reproductive and gender affirming care so we divided them into two for that reason um when we spoke with kp law uh, I believe Mandy, correct me if I'm wrong. We had we had looked, and by we I mean Mandy, because I read it and was like, I need a translation. Um, we did not believe that it was in conflict with state law, and um, that we were cleared there. And then the first part you said, is it state law? Were there other changes? I think. Or were there other changes? Um, the the changes that we made in the version that we sent back to GOL, I believe, had reflected what KP law had recommended. And the changes that we opted not to make, it wasn't that they felt that that was a violation of anything that we had. It was more of just, they wanted us to understand that we are creating something that's broad reaching and we know that, and that's intentional. Um, we believe that this should apply to folks receiving town money, for example, um, and that that shouldn't be only, you know, town employees. It should also be grant recipients or things like that. Mandy, did I miss anything? Um, no, um, you didn't. KP Law, you know, did have some concerns about the broadness of it, um, but and and lack of some definition of terms. But in general, I think we 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 were able to explain some of that, and and in in that conversation, some of their concerns of broadness were alleviated. Um, and and beyond that, they just said, "Are you sure you?" you you want to do it basically um so they couldn't identify anything in particular that was in conflict with state law um other than i think some of the we we had some open no um some some public records ones that i think we've reworded so that that was there was a public records issue and, and we reworded with i believe their recommended language on that um athena has her hand up the last time I just wanted to note the last time the committee spoke about the bylaw um, where things were left were, were, were that the the chair would send the revised draft to the town manager and also seek input from the schools and library. Right. And we got uh, schools and library had no particular comments on it. So everything had been sent to uh, the town manager. Um, so I so what I'm feeling like is, given that there's this separation of the Pregnancy Crisis Center out of the bylaw, I would like to see us recommend this to town council without, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what it is that we want KP Law to look at again. Um, yeah, I, I do just want to emphasize, I know that the, I know that the bylaw that I introduced last year and withdrew and then the bylaws that were recently vetoed in East Hampton and that are being brought forward in Worcester and Northampton and other areas, that is not this bylaw. 
Um, that is, and, and I think that it's a little confusing because it's a, around the same topic, but it, they are very different bylaws. And this one is not, um, does not have the same possible, um, thank you, legal implications as the crisis pregnancy center ones. Michelle? Um, this might be, uh, I, I think we're going to review this for clarity, consistency, and actionability at some point. Um, and so I, I just have a question about the purpose. Um, it, and also, I'm trying in my mind to get to the nut of what this bylaw d does, you know, and so that it's easy for somebody to look at and understand immediately what the purpose is. And so it seems to me like the la like it's almost a little buried. Um, like this last line, the purpose of this bylaw is to prohibit the disclosure. Is that what you would say is the nut of this? Like, is that the sort of, okay. So for me, just reading it and this being sort of like a, a kind of heavier document for me to read, like a lot, if there's a lot going with it, it feels like that bringing that up somehow closer to the top would really right off the bat allow people to understand uh, what the purpose of the bylaw is. So I'm not sure, like that would mean uh, we would have to combine a couple things to do that. But for me, the, that would make it much more clear. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask about is uh, in the title, access to legally protected is that like including legally protected? Is that, could you share what like the purpose of, what is it, how does that differ from something that's not legally protected? I don't know what I'm asking, but I'm just wondering about what that legally protected really is uh, saying. Is there something that's not legally protected? <laughs> yeah, like, I'm, and I don't know enough about this to understand that that piece. So those are just right off the bat, kind of my two, just trying to wrap my mind around this, um, bringing the purpose up immediately to, is that the sole purpose is to prohibit the disclosure of information or use of town funds to impede the rights that are listed above that um, or assist abusive litigation? So, so I think to answer your second point, and and Mandy, I know we'll add on or correct me if I'm if I'm misspeaking. Um, that was to demonstrate that we are in compliance with the state law, as well as to emphasize that this care is protected in Massachusetts. So um, saying that it's you know we're not asking for we're not asking to go beyond what state law has protected. It's really to say like we are in, we're complying with and creating an additional level of support for what the state has been doing. Um, that's why it says legally protected. Um, does that clarify? It does. I guess I'm just wondering, like from the the standpoint of getting it adopted by the council, um, like, will there be the question like, well, if this is already in the state law, like that kind of line of, you know, questioning, um, does that sort of, it, I think it's fine. I think you, you made your point. But no, 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 I get what you're saying. No, I do. And I, it's a question that we've gotten before. And I think one that we are ready to answer, right, is why this is necessary if it's already legally protected. And I, and Mandy has a beautiful answer about how it, my answer is not as artful. She gets into the specifics, but um, we're closing loopholes, right? And we're 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 we found and are closing loopholes that the state isn't able to do on a local level, right? So that's that's what we're doing. We're backing up the state law on a local level by eliminating some of the accident, I believe, accidental loopholes that existed. And yeah. uh, in competition with Michelle for the GOL award for least important. <laughs> Uh, and the purpose, it says this purpose of this bylaw, it should say the purpose of this bylaw. And I do like that the information is there before the purpose. I think it clarifies things for me anyway.
So it's one to one, Michelle. Sorry. Richard, go ahead. <laughs> you weren't here for that earlier, Anna. We're <laughs> we have a little battle going on. I love it. We can find the most <laughs> the smallest correction. Silly errors. Yeah. I love it. Um <laughs> Um, yeah, so I guess I, I, um, Pat, you said you like having the information before saying the purpose of the bylaw of this bylaw. Um, and so is there, is this sort of like the standard format of a bylaw or would there ever be another category that would sort of give the background, for example, and then have the purpose? I just, that's such a, an important nugget there that um, while I do also like having the background, I just don't want that to get lost or buried. Um, so just something to consider. And I would, if the sponsors would like to respond to that. Uh, I believe that what we had, the, the way it's framed the way it is, is to be consistent with our other bylaws. Uh, Mandy, do you have any other, am I wrong on that? Um, I'd have to look at the other bylaws. The, the purpose statement is supposed to be very short, right? And so I can work on rewriting it, which I'm, I'm doing now just in case people want it rewritten so that the purpose is front. The, the I think the difficult thing is, Michelle, with rewriting it to put the first three sentences last is that those three sentences sort of define what we're prohibiting disclosure of information on. Um, and so rewriting the purpose, almost putting that last sentence first almost requires um, making the sentence like seven clauses long so that it explains that reproductive and gender affirming healthcare, so that the purpose sentence would now explain that reproductive and gender affirming healthcare services are rights recognized in the Commonwealth and that interfering in those attempts um, um, in order to deny access to them violates those rights. And, you know, and so, so it, it might almost get even more unwieldy, even though in some sense, I agree that putting the, that the purpose of as the last sentence of that kind of buries it, to put that first, then almost means we're in one sentence instead of four. Is there any value in um, separating the sentence uh, with a space from the rest of the paragraph? Just visually, would that help? I love that might, it. just putting it as a second paragraph. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Create a little white space to just get it. Yeah, absolutely. That I think that would help a lot. I'm sorry, I had to step away for a moment. Where do you want the white space? Yes, please. The last sentence of the purpose section. So the per, the, the sentence After, that starts the purpose of this bylaw would just oh, be a like separate a, paragraph. There. Yeah. Yeah. A little, yeah, but a little more Add space. An extra space in there too. So an extra return. Yeah. And then you want a space after two, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> How's that, Michelle? That's really great. Yeah, that was a great, a great crafty way to do it. All right. Now, are we going to go through this line by line or have people already noted sections that they want to address? And again, this is not a substantive review. It's for clarity, consistency, and actionability. I apologize. I have to um, jump to an 11 o'clock meeting, but uh, please let Thank me know you. if you need. Thank you all so much. I appreciate your attention on this. Yeah, Thanks. take care. All so we move, uh, and does anyone, we have looked at this before, but I don't know if we went line by line. So, um, I did not find anything when I did a read through the other day, but that doesn't mean that there's because I missed the this this per, the purpose thing until just now. So, Michelle, I think uh, number four uh, B. 
should that have a semicolon as the rest have a semicolon or is that it should oh yes uh oh she's ahead of me <laughs> You can you can still uh, there's still time. All right <laughs> now after D after the semicolon should there be a word and? Um no because it's not an and. Right. Okay thank you. The subcontractor need to be capitalized or should all? Of uh, it subcontractor be is a defined term. Ah oh, got it thank you. I can keep going. Can you scroll up, Athena? I don't want to scroll too fast so no. and I, I just have a quick question i think i know the answer where it says pa patient's location we're uh, talking about other people being able to come to massachusetts to receive care yes where, where are you Pat? Uh, I, oh heavens could you scroll down a teeny bit uh, oh, yeah. where was it Oh, um, yeah. in just above seven, yeah. Regardless of the patient's location. What is that referring to? That's a clarification for me. Yes, so, um, um, yeah, um, so, so the healthcare activity, um, the activity needs to occur in the Commonwealth just because right. of licensing stuff, right? Um, but yes, that is that is essentially the referral that the referring to the issue that there may be people who live in another state that come to Massachusetts and Amherst to okay, receive good. some health care. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't my my hand is not so so does this mean residence no so so actually rereading it sorry i didn't read the whole thing so so there is the possibility that um if under massachusetts law and and this is where i don't know because the state law is changing all the time and the licensing laws if under massachusetts law a a healthcare provider is allowed to provide telehealth to someone that is not actually located in Massachusetts at the time that telehealth is provided. Um, this would cover them even if they weren't located in Massachusetts at the time the healthcare was provided, as long as it was legally, as long as it's legally provided, right? Because um, it says the provision of healthcare services by a person duly licensed under ours and physically present in um, is legally protected services if it's permitted under the laws of mass of of the Commonwealth. So, so it's just I there there's there's because this is such an active field of of ensuring protection. I I just don't know the state of our state laws on um, providing that um, healthcare active uh, healthcare services telehealth wise so this is intended if a massachusetts provider provides telehealth services to someone located in texas while they're located in texas but legally received that service because massachusetts allows that massachusetts provider to do that it would be covered under our bylaw mm -hmm. even though they were located in texas at the time it was provided 
But the other situation where they come to Massachusetts is already in here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any value to, uh, regardless of the patient's residence. I, I don't think I would want that change. So it doesn't make sense to do location or residence. Oh, hmm. No, I think it's location. Okay. okay. So it really covers the, the issue of telehealth. Yes. Yes. Do we want to put that word in there somewhere? I don't. So I would be hesitant to change this definition okay. because it's been pulled from standard yeah. recommended gotcha. definitions. Gotcha. We can scroll down. Yeah. And scroll. Mm Michelle? Might not be quite there yet, but um, down in remedies, um, so violations, enforcement, and remedies. So number two is remedies. Um, I'm a little bit confused by the B1. Um, just in terms of... So in addition to the remedies outlined. Why isn't it just like a C or something? Like, why is it? Um, it could probably be re reworded better. It was, it was pulled from our TIF bylaw, um, which I believe had a couple of extra one, two, and threes or B, C, D s subject directly to contractors. Um, it might be able to, let me see. Um, yeah, so so what we could do is eliminate the one and eliminate the first clause and start a new sentence right after the end of B that's part of B that says a contractor to the extent would be just fine. Um, you know, so it's just part of section B, not a separate B1. Um, but it's in there to say the contractor is is liable for violations of subcontractors. It's subcontractors. Um, okay. So it can be it can be made part of section B by um, eliminating the first clause and starting the sentence with a contractor. So are you here or this one? That one, yeah, the the this sub one. one not the one is part of B. So okay. yeah, so, so so yeah, where where you are, Athena, in that cursor, just mm -hmm. delete everything to the le to the word A. So delete in addition to the remedies outlined in section E two B above, and then just make a capital A as a new sentence. Yeah. And it'll now be part of section two B. Yeah. Like that.
Yeah, we've we've tried to adopt the contractor language in that TIF bylaw as much as possible since that one's already been through legal review and all. Mm -hmm. I also think, did, are we going to add the counselor sponsors to the top of, or no, no, does that not happen with a bylaw? This is a different animal. Okay. Well, right. I'm Mandy and uh, Anna will present a memo to the town council. Yeah. Can we move down or up? However, whichever way. That's it. Right. No. Yep. Well, it ends with that C. Well, I move that we recommend, and I move that, uh, I'm not sure of the language, that uh, declare declare the, the whole title, Reproductive and Gender Affirming Care, I don't have the title in front of me, um, is clear, consistent, and actionable as amended. Second. And do we have an idea when this will be on the agenda then? Uh, we'll decide today later on whether we're gonna whether we're going to put it on the 11th, the 18th or wait till October. Right now with all of the school stuff, yeah. I'm starting to move things that were going to come up in September to October. That makes so, sense. So Lynn, as sponsor, you, we can't because it's a bylaw vote on it on the 18th, even if the first reading is right. the 11th, because it needs two weeks on the bulletin board and we're. Oh, thank you. That's right. 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 Well, we could vote. I guess we could if it was posted like tomorrow, vote on it on the 18th. But um, I'm, I, think, I'm not... I think Anna and I are fine with readings in October or the first one in sub September 18th and the next one in October. Um, I'd appreciate the opportunity to move it to the October meetings. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that would be fine. Okay. Thank you for your work on this. And Anna we, also. We have to vote, Pat. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't do it that way. Okay. <laughs> Lynn Griesmer. Aye. Andy Johanneke. Aye. Michelle Miller. I, Jennifer Taub. Yes. And I'm an I. I think this is one of the most important things we're going to do in our terms. No. Okay. So we have about uh, 15 minutes left of our meeting. So I would, uh, you have a very bizarre look on your face, Athena, like you're in shock. Rude. So I want to check in before we do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm trying to save this in the right place. So I'm oh, just okay. We'll give you a second. <laughs> that's just I'm working hard. That's my face. <laughs> when you said October two and sixteen is when you want to see this. Yeah. Thanks. I, I'm just. We all know why. Yep. Okay. Also, the reason I. I really, um, if bylaws don't come forward until then, that's fine. If rules of procedure don't come forward till November, that's fine. I don't think, given the pace that we're working at on that, I don't think it's going to. <laughs> and uh, in many ways, there are, the rules and procedures, while they do need changes, are not that horrible that there's something that, yeah. All right, we are going back to 4.5, posting of the agenda and packets, because we made the changes, but we didn't vote on the changes. If, if you want to, I think Mandy suggested um, doing them as a group. If you okay. want to do That's them fine. like that, then you can continue on with these and then make a recommendation okay. on a group of changes uh, up to you. And up, if you want me to bring up the changes that the committee had discussed before, just let me know. Well, I'd like to, I guess, then to move on to uh, your issues with the consent agenda. Is there consensus on four on the changes to four point five? No, oh, no, sorry. Thank you, Athena. I'm I'm fine with them. Yeah, I am too. 
Me too. Okay. Yeah. I'm good. Okay, four, six. Um, I want to look on, on consent where it says in the third paragraph, no discussion took place regarding any item on consent. Yes, fine. It's it's consistent with the practice. Sort of. Not really. Can you say more, Athena? And then I'll call on you, Michelle. Um, the edit that I had was, um, I don't think it applied to this part. My, um... Oh, wait a minute. No, it's not consistent. So the theme said it was the paragraph one. Can we deal with that first? Um, so I am proposing to add this and then removing this. Because oh, it's okay. a little repetitive. So that's mm -hmm. that was my proposed change. Oh, hmm. I, I, that's a very good point, Athena, on that one. No, I'm fine with this. Well, I'm going to call on Michelle first. I'm sorry. Need you wait. Well, that's okay. Um, so I think I just wanted to talk about the word non-controversial um, because I think that it's my understanding that what gets put on the consent agenda is decided by the council president and clerk, perhaps in combination, um, depending on what's going on. Um, and so like, I, I know that that means that it's uh, based on the perception of that person or persons. Um, and I, I think that there have been times where um, maybe even at our last meeting where there was an item that was placed on the consent agenda that was controversial. Um, and it's difficult, I think, without talking to each counselor to figure out what is going to be controversial and what is not. Um, so I'm just wondering how uh, like routine, I'm, I'm trying to think of the example of what it was. Uh, I can, we had the compensation. Um, limiting public comment went on the consent agenda when we knew that we didn't realize, of course, that would be controversial. It got put on basically by accident. Um, so I thought yeah. that's to me the biggest example. Um, you can continue and then I'll call on Mandy Jo. Sure. Yeah. I was just going to say, I remembered that last week it was the, um, I felt that putting the compensation as a referral to finance, like that was my perception that that was, con it did end up being controversial. Um, and it was put on the consent agenda. And I think about this a lot in terms of the public, if it's, you know, hard for them to pick up on all of these kinds of things. And so if it gets put on the consent agenda, it, so I'm just wondering, um, how we might, uh, yeah. think about that. I'd like to uh, respond quickly because uh, to me, it was not uh, the referral to finance was not controversial. But the positive thing is that you pulled it, which is exactly how the consent agenda is supposed to work. Because I think if we have to do some kind of checking in with counselors to see whether they think it's controversial, um, that's that's not a valuable use of time. And I go back to the public comment. It was pulled right away and it should have been. And so I, I think that there is a protection built right in. That's my opinion. I'm going to go to Mandy and then Jennifer. Yeah, I, I think potentially what Lynn was getting at with paragraph three might also get there. But you know, I, I actually agree with Michelle that the use of the word non-controversial might be problematic, um, but what can we put in there? Um, because paragraph two is where we try to explain what goes on and give the guidance to the president of what goes on. And and something, you know, 
the the to use the public comment issue, it, it went on because it came out of committee with a unanimous recommendation. And, and I do support putting things that come on out of committee with a unanimous recommendation on consent. I also support any counselor removing that from consent um, because the whole goal of consent is to try and figure out how much we can do quickly because there's not a need for conversation and it might, everyone might vote for it. Right. Um, and so could we, uh, what can we use instead of non-controversial be of routine or potential unanimous votes or, or potentially a unanimous vote or, or something, um, figure out some other wording because, because that's sort of the point of it. And when something comes out of committee with a unanimous recommendation, um, I don't necessarily think it's the president's job to say, well, I don't like it, so I'm not putting it on consent, even though it had unanimous, or I do, so I am. I think it's our, as other counselors that aren't on that committee to say, you know what, I, I got to pull this one because I want to talk about it or not. And then I think Lynn's getting to paragraph three, which we haven't actually been following because some of these referrals, Lynn's like, let's try and get these motions that have to be by roll call and take a lot of time out we can still discuss what we want to tell X committee before they consider it. Um, paragraph three in this one doesn't quite fit with how Lynn's been doing it, but I actually support how she's been doing it because roll call votes take a lot of time. Um, yeah. Jennifer? I mean, can we just leave it at routine? Because I do think non-controversial can be in the eyes of the beholder. It's just- So can routine. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it seems yeah, no. a little less. I mean, maybe just routine nature. I don't know. I, I actually Googled synonyms for controversial, but didn't find any that worked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lynn? I, I have to honestly say I've been uncomfortable with the word non-controversial. Uh, I do like the way it's been working and um, want to make sure when we get down below that we make that consistent with how I've been doing it in the last probably six months almost. Um, but I don't know what else to say uh, besides non-controversial because a simple referral should, it, it can be controversial. And it was last week because- but that doesn't, I'm sorry. That doesn't mean somebody can't remove it. So um, that it works because people do- they're forced to look at the stuff on the consent and say, is there anything I don't want to vote on under consent? And so it, it is a judgment call. And I also want to just add to one other thing too, and that is between the time that a committee votes unanimously and the time the consent agenda gets published, something can move from being appearing non-controversial to becoming really controversial. And I would say that the um, issue about public comment was co in that category. It does. I'm going to take a minute and then I'll call on you, Michelle, if you don't mind. I, I feel like I don't have any problem with the non-controversial. I do have some problem with um, things automatically if a committee um, votes unanimously, which we did, uh, that it's automatically put on the consent agenda because then to me, there's no review. Wait, public comment is always con controversial. There's no, there's no way around that. It always will be, uh, no matter who's on council, who's in the community. Uh, so I, I don't know if I feel as comfortable with if it's passed a committee unanimously that it should just be put on consent. That's where I'm stuck. Michelle, then Jennifer, and then Mandy. I'm thinking about myself as a new counselor um, two years ago and uh, really not understanding necessarily uh, like sort of putting trust in the process that the president went through and not thinking necessarily about, um, you know, I assumed, I think, for some period of time that if it was on the consent agenda, that's where it belonged. <laughs> um, and so maybe that's bad on me. You know what I mean? That I should have been more aware that 
this is an item that I don't feel comfortable having go through consent and I can pull it off, you know, but I just, I did in, at least for some period in the beginning of my, my term, I did not do that. So I just want it to be as clear as possible to both the person making that decision about what goes on and to the other counselors, um, you know, that there should be no assumption that because the president deemed it to be non-controversial, um, that it it won't be because the president really has maybe has a sense with with all of our president's experience, but not all presidents may uh, know what will turn out to be controversial or or not, um, and that can change, like Lynn said. Um, Jennifer. Yes, I, I agree with with you, Pat. I'm more uncomfortable with it. I, I don't think the fact that it came out of a committee unanimously should necessarily be a criteria for why it's put on the consent calendar. I just will say. Mandy? So I was going to say, I worry about just saying routine nature because bylaw amendments are not necessarily routine. Um, so I would want some sort of other, in the first paragraph, some sort of other indication in there, because we have actually done a lot of bylaws on consent. Bylaws require two readings, and so that gives the council president, number one, an opportunity after the first reading, even if it came out of committee unanimously, to say, you know what, it's clear this is not a consent agenda item, right? Um, but it's not necessarily considered a routine item, that would fall under that. But I think if after the first reading, when not a single counselor has really had a comment and it came out of committee unanimously, it it should at least be attempted on consent, right? And if someone decides in that week that they've heard something that they don't want it on consent, that's fine. But I don't see a reason to keep it off of consent. I was going to suggest in the second paragraph with the bylaws in, in particular, or anything that comes out of a committee that it says, um, with to the full council with unanimous recommendation for approval, it says accept any item having a high level of public interest or controversy. And then it says as determined by the council president, I would actually recommend adding council president or committee chair. Um, because I know there have been times that I've gone to from CRC, I've gone to the president and said, hey, this one's out of CRC. This was its unanimous recommendation, but do not put it on consent. Like where I said, you know, we made it, we made it unanimously, but this is not appropriate for consent. And, and in theory, the president could ignore the committee's chair under this rule and say, I'm still putting it on consent. Um, and so I, I think we should empower our committee chairs also to allow that recommendation to the president to stand just to, to again, say, Hey, um, you know, we had, 20 months of discussion and yes we got to unanimous but i'm positive someone's gonna want to talk about it at the council so don't put it on consent type thing so i would recommend that sort of add to um um actually athena um it's the sentence before that where or committee chair should go um i think yeah that line oh I also, it would be wonderful if we could suspend the fantasy that any president is doing his or her best to manipulate everything. It would be really nice if we just said, oh, it's on the consent agenda. I don't want it there, you know, and not blame the person who put it there. That would be so refreshing. Lynn? Pat, I appreciate that. Um, very much because uh, there are times when something has gone on the consent agenda and it's only uh, the day of the meeting that I find out there's more of a controversy around it. So above where it says of routine and non-controversial -con nature, could we say be of a routine nature and with limited controversy? Yeah. No, <laughs> I, 
Yeah, I'm also fine just leaving. How do you measure controversy? Yeah. Damn if I know. Um, <laughs> why don't we just leave it the way it is on that one? And I like the suggestion that was made uh, on committee chairs. I, I personally would capitalize committee and chair uh, down below. But I really want to make sure, and I, I really have a hard stop. I should have been off. That's fine. Not I good. really want to make sure that we come back to that third paragraph because I'd like to make it consistent. Uh, now, and we're not going to do it today, but maybe we just highlight it and say begin here. I'd like to make it consistent with yeah, do the, that, please. the practice that we've been doing. Could we just have Athena highlight non-controversial nature nature up above? I, I yep. think we can find another word. Great. I was just actually looking at Robert's rules and that's sort of the language, but there's some other language that I think we might be able to include here that will help us clarify this. So it will be good to come back to it. Good. Absolutely. All right, then I'm going to call uh, for um, public comment. Um, since there are no attendees, we're, there is no need for a public comment beyond following the rule. What? what sorry, sorry. No, I was just no, sorry. Nothing. nothing. So uh, with the grand power of chair of the GOL committee, I am <laughs> calling this meeting. I'm adjourning this Don't meeting. Don't let it go to your head. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Good meeting. Thank you, Athena. And Athena, send me the link again. I've taken more notes than I usually do, but I think uh, I'm <coughs> thank you very much.